Hello. So that's the second part of it. Theme 12, uh, I will then uh, discuss some attempts to expand the GDP as a, as a welfare indicator. So in the previous lesson, we discussed some of the limitations of the GDP as a, as a measure of standard of, of living. And uh, therefore, this motivates to then uh, also to try to develop some alternative, uh, perhaps somewhat better, better or more comprehensive uh, measures of standard of living. And um, one of the attempts uh, is, uh, which is also mentioned in the textbook by Permanent All, is the Index of Sustainable Economic Welfare, or ISEW, uh, initially proposed by Daly and Cobb in the late 80s. So um, here's the, on this slide, here's the formula of how this ISEW is, is uh, computed and what kind of factors it's trying to take into account. Uh, so there is uh, not only the uh, personal consumption expenditure, but also, also an index of uh, distributional inequality taken into account. Uh, and there's a large number of factors taken into account, uh, uh, for example, health and education, um, but then also also like uh, like uh, with this kind of uh, negative sign in this in this index notice that this uh, e f g and h are taken into account with a positive sign so this e x is this kind of uh, uh, extra market labor services uh, flow of services from consumer durables uh, value of streets and highway services h was this uh, health and education services so this try to capture this kind of uh, public uh, services better than what the what the GDP is is doing but then there is also also a large number of negatives so so everything on the right hand side column are then uh, taking into account with the negative side so there are there are for example uh, um, there there exists uh, like like defense spending advertising, uh, uh, commuting costs, uh, automobile accidents, water pollution, air pollution, and so on. So, so there is this kind of like uh, like uh, negative values for this kind of uh, expenditure. So they do not uh, increase the uh, sustainable economic welfare, according to the authors. Uh, so um, this is uh, this is a, a serious attempt to to uh, broaden the GDP. But um, on the other hand, it's also somewhat uh, um, perhaps might might seem somewhat selective that what kind of factors are taken into account, uh, and uh, in some sense there's also also arbitrary choices also in this uh, ISEW indicator. So I do not go to the go to the great details or or, or critique of this approach, but uh, notice that of course when there's like like with the negative sign, so many different issues that actually in the in the usual GDP would uh, would be accounted with a positive sign, or many of them would be not accounted or accounted with a positive sign, and then not surprisingly then then typically then this uh, this uh, ISEW will get much lower values than. Than, than the GDP. So here is a diagram for the from the United Kingdom. So how the how this ISEW index compares to the gross national product GNP, which is similar to the uh, similar to the to the GDP that we have talked about, but that there's some some uh, small difference to the GNP. It's national product, not the domestic product. But but any anyway that uh, uh, GNP indicates. Uh, uh, economic growth in the UK from the 1950s to 1990s, but uh, but when we take this kind of uh, factors of uh, in this uh, sustainable economic welfare into account with the negative sign, then then there is growth from the 1950s to the early 70s, but then actually there is decline in many of these uh, these uh, factors uh, uh, from from there on. So this gives much more pessimistic view about the economic development. So of course there's also its own limitations in the in this ISEW index. So there have been then some some further developments and uh, one of the serious ones is this um, 
a genuine progress indicator GPI, which uh, is takes a similar approach as ISEW, but uh, but uh, takes even even a larger number of indicators. And following this, uh, these kind of pillars of uh, sustainable development, including economic, environmental, and social. So here in this figure, uh, on the bottom part of the of the slide, uh, here is a comparison of GDP, uh, GPI, and ISW, ISEW. Actually, it should be for for Finland. And uh, this is um, from a from a publication from the Statistics Finland by by Hofren. So, in my impression, uh, Statistics Finland, the official statistics uh, authority in Finland, was uh, computing besides besides of course this uh, official GDP figures. It was also using these kind of satellite accounts to 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 also construct uh, the GPI and ES ISEW and. Uh, like in the case of the UK, of course, this kind of uh, uh, alternative measures indicate much much uh, slower growth in the in the after the Second World War. So here in the figure, the blue curve is uh, is the conventional GDP per capita, and then there is um, a red one is this uh, genuine progress indicator GPI, and the yellow orange whatever this is ISEW this. Uh, uh, this Cop and Daly's approach, and uh, we see that, of course, this kind of alternative measures that take uh, take also environmental and social issues into account, they show less progress. Uh, uh, but then these two curves, uh, this red and yellow curve, somewhat diverge in the towards the end of the end of the period, which also indicates that 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 uh, it it matters that what kind of factors actually are taken into account. And also, how the what kind of weights do we give to these kind of kind of factors? So there is of course always the challenge that how to make uh, uh, make these kind of uh, very different types of indicators comparable, and what kind of weight should we give to these indicators? Do we just use equal weights, or or should we give some somewhat more weight to some other other criteria, some criteria than others? So. I was trying to look for that uh, is if there is something something newer for this kind of uh, in in Finland uh, after the after the financial crisis, but uh, unfortunately I could not could not find any more 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 recent uh, and also in my impression this kind of uh, uh, GPI and these kind of developments have somewhat fallen out of out of fashion. That uh, that seems to me that these kind of um, satellite accounts are not uh, not necessarily updated anymore, and uh, I suspect the one reason might be that uh, the attention has turned to the Sustainable Development Goal indicators (SDGs). So this is also something that um, that uh, Finland uh, Statistics Finland has put a lot of a uh, lot of resources. So I'm afraid this uh, text uh, description is in Finnish, but. Uh, but it is indicating here anyway that um, that uh, what kind of uh, factors are measured in this SDGs, and nowadays the tendency is that uh, instead of trying to uh, trying to aggregate a large number of different indicators to a single measure, then then this kind of uh, the, we keep these uh, indicators separately, and then there are specific goals for for each indicator. What should be should be um uh, met so so this seems to be now this kind of uh, uh, sort of consensus approach also in the united nations uh, member states that uh, that uh, so there is not such kind of um uh, or comprehensive uh, single index for for these sdgs that aggregates all of this but rather these different indicators are reported and monitored separately so that might uh, might explain that uh, why this kind of, uh, for example, this GPI uh, is not necessarily updated anymore, but of course it might be might be also also still interesting to have also more overall perspective. Like like in the uh, economic growth, we have the GDP that indicates. Of course, GDP is not perfect, but also also it's maybe useful to try to have also some kind of aggregate measure at least that's that's my my opinion so in in that sense perhaps uh, this kind of uh, 
uh, monitoring a large number of uh, of like like uh, dozens if not hundreds of indicators might be also like a uh, and leading that sort of development in the in the wrong direction. So besides this kind of official official like statistics Finland uh, indicators, of course there exist also alternative composite indicators and uh, developed by by other organizations. So so um, let me indicate a couple of alternatives. So there's, for example, the United Nations that are driven human, human development index, HDI, which uh, takes more this kind of development focus that there is, there is the GDP also uh, taken into account, but it also then expands in, in more simple terms to take other, other type of development uh, issues such as uh, life expectancy at birth and adult literacy rate into account. So it's not as comprehensive as this, some, some of the previous attempts, but anyway, also a bit more comprehensive perhaps than the conventional GDP measure. Um, OECD has also its own better life index, which has uh, multiple dimensions such as health, economic work, workplace income, jobs, housing, civic engagement and life satisfaction dimensions. And, and, and then it, uh, then it is, uh, aggregating many of these these issues so here it's more this kind of economic and, and social part of the sustainable development uh, but um, environment doesn't factor in so strongly except through the health and uh, and uh, and life satisfaction type type of issues finally uh, one of these kind of indicators that uh, has attracted a lot of uh, media attention here in finland is the world happiness report uh, which is um, based on a subjective uh, responses to a survey. And uh, you might, of course, know that, that, that Finland has been ranking as number one in this, uh, this uh, World Happiness Report, I believe, is six consecutive years by now. So, so that is uh, uh, a rather, rather interesting finding. So there, are, there exist, of course, like several different um, different approaches to to try to capture this kind of uh, standard of living from from various different perspectives uh, but so far there is not such kind of um, uh, single like uh, like a single aggregate measure to sort of substitute the conventional gdp that has not at, at least not not so far emerged so i will then proceed in the next lesson to discuss the so-called green growth and how these kind of uh, massive investments to abating uh, carbon dioxide emissions have, uh, have influenced the measured uh, economic growth. See you next time. Bye-bye.